What's good everybody and welcome to Mouth Busters, the series on this channel where we bust the myths of the beauty world before your very own eyes. I'm your host and main girl Mel and today's test is all about silicones and sulfates. Silicones is an ingredient that has been shunned by the curly hair world for being a toxic ingredient that builds up on the hair, suffocates your strands, prevents moisture from getting in, therefore drying it from the inside out and making it very difficult to remove from the hair without damaging it from using harsh chemicals like sulfates. At least, that's the theory. Are silicones that difficult to wash off from the hair that we have to use sulfates? Can a sulfate-free shampoo wash away silicones as well as a sulfate cleanser? Or do we need to use sulfates to cleanse the hair when using silicones to prevent buildup? In order to find out, stay tuned. This experiment will be carried out with the unwilling assistance of Samantha and Deborah. This one's Deb. The bangs kind of give me Debbie vibes. So she's she's Deborah. She's cute. She's got the blue eyes. She also has the blue eyeshadow. Probably should have reeled back on that one. But then there's Sam. Sam thinks she's a bad bitch. Sam's like this this brunette, the brown eyes, and like the natural textured hair. And um, she's about to risk it all for us. She's risking it all for us. For science. And both of their hairs have been prepped with a clarifying chelating shampoo beforehand. It was freshly clarified, not conditioned, and air dried to look like this. To conduct this experiment, we will be layering multiple products heavy with silicones on their prepped and clean hair. They will each get the exact same treatment up until their wash, where one of the girls will get shampooed with a sulfate-free cleanser and the other will be shampooed with a sulfate cleanser. And so the experiment begins. I will be layering these products from the thinnest to the thickest consistency using a variety of sprays and serums that are all very rich in silicones. Now as I coat the hair with many different types of silicone products, we're going to have Scientific Mel school us a little bit on why there are so many different types of silicones, what the benefits may be, and maybe even bust a few myths right here, right now. Hi, I'm Scientific Mel, called on to bring you the nitty gritty scientific, actual, factual on silicones. Silicones found in our personal care products are liquids and they work by forming a thin hydrophobic layer or coating over the hair and skin to provide many different functions of the product. Silicones are actually one of the most conditioning ingredients that you can apply to your hair. Silicones are used in a variety of different products to offer benefits such as adding slip and glide to a product, adding thermal protection, color protection, and frizz prevention. It is very common to see a mixture of different silicones on our products, one of the most common being dimethicone. Dimethicone is very frequently used in both skin and hair products because it creates such an excellent barrier for skin and hair. Another very common silicone is cyclomethicone. The difference between the two is dimethicone is heavier and coats the hair, while cyclomethicone, which is very thin and actually evaporates out of the hair once it has done its function, which is mainly there to help smooth your products over your hair. Now, here's some things that silicones are not gonna do. Silicones are non-comedogenic, meaning they cannot clog your pores or your scalps. And while they do create a barrier to keep in moisture, it doesn't form a perfect seal over the hair. Very fine particles of water, like water vapor, are still able to penetrate into the hair. Well, you know what, let's just do a couple extra sprays for good measure. And well, according to science, there is actually no proof that silicones cause any damage to the hair, nor do they stop other products from working, nor do they cause hair loss. Let's just bust that myth. And while yes, their purpose is to form some sort of buildup over the hair to protect it, it is in no way going to cause hair loss, not if you are shampooing your hair, which I hope you are shampooing your hair. Well, in this envelope, I hold the answers. And in the case of using silicones on the hair that have been said to cause buildup by coating the hair and not allowing moisture in or out, and that same sealing action leading to drier hair and frizzier hair that can only be solved by using harsh sulfates, drying the hair out even more, The lie detector test determined that was a lie. The end. Thank you for watching. No, I'm kidding. Ooh, there's money in here. <laughs> Is it really that simple? Can we really just use 
any shampoo we want, with any products that we want, allow us to explain. Well, the tea is sulfate-free cleansers are believed to be milder. So we're gonna try to do the scrape test to see if there is a difference coming off of the hair washed with sulfate-free and washed with sulfates. So um, we have another assistant here. I, I feel so surrounded. Well, we'll just, we'll just test the sulfates. Breaking the hair. This is just shaving the hair off, literally. And it did the exact same thing before we even started, when the hair was completely clarified with a chelating shampoo and there was nothing on the hair. Literally shaving off the hair. Okay. Do you see how that's just the freaking hair? Mm -hmm. Okay. Nope. Look at all the... It just created like a bunch of split ends. That's Miss Deb. That's our sulfate free queen. Thank you so much, Amanda. What a wonderful helper. Thank you. So this leads us to believe that um, one, silicones don't necessarily build up on the hair as long as you're washing them, but it also doesn't make a huge difference what you're washing them with. But how could this be? Sulfates in the beauty industry have been labeled as so harsh that sulfate free is all the rave when really there's only a handful of truly mild cleanser ingredients that are out there on the market. They are harder to find, but these are some of the mildest surfactant cleansers that you can find in your ingredients. Take your screenshot. Most of these ingredients are found in very gentle formulas such as baby shampoos. And the reason they are known for being milder is for two reasons. They, for one, don't strip the natural oils of the hair as much. And two, the ingredients in the cleanser do not cling to the proteins in our hair and our scalp, which makes it far less irritating for our skin. Does this mean that if you are using sulfates, you're going to ruin your hair? Absolutely not. Sulfates such as sodium lauryl sulfate and sodium laureth sulfate and ammonium lauryl sulfate are so commonly used in hair care products because they are the most effective cleansers, especially if you have very greasy hair or if you use a lot of product. And yes, they are best known for being great at removing silicones. However, the downside to using sulfates is that they can be too harsh for very fine and dry and fragile hair types and sensitizing or irritating to sensitive skin types. However, it should be noted that most sulfate cleansers today do contain conditioning ingredients in the formula as well to combat any of those harsh and dry side effects that you could experience. For example, you may find silicones in shampoos that have sulfates because together they are working to cleanse while also condition and lubricate the hair. You will also often find fatty alcohols like cetereal alcohol and cetyl alcohol and some other conditioning ingredients like cocomidobentanine, cocomidropopyl, cocomidropopyl, bentanine, that was close and I'm done. These additional ingredients help to tone down the effects of the sulfates. But does it mean that you need to use sulfate cleansers? Absolutely not. You don't need sulfate cleansers because there's other ingredients out there that do the same job and are known to be milder. Here is a much more extensive list of mild ingredients that you will find in your sulfate or sulfate free shampoos. And for just a few more tips, if you're really trying to look for more gentle options when it comes to cleansers, then look for ingredients like betaine and cocoa glucoside, silicones, polyquaternariums, guar, and if you see ingredients like isethionate or glucoside as the first ingredient after water, then you're looking pretty mild. And well, I hope that helps. I hope that clears things up. If I hear one more person say, silicones cannot be washed off unless you're using harsh stuff harsh, harsh. i'm tired of it i'm tired of it let's end that conversation let's stop the fear mongering i'm tired of it i'm tired of it scientific mel has spoken off duty now i need a drink Honestly, I'm relieved and I was really excited to conduct this experiment because this video idea came to me when I realized that for over two months, I was unintentionally and unconsciously conducting this very own experiment on my own head. Because I'm always trying out new products to share with you guys, I was trying out a bunch of different lines and nowadays, even if sulfates aren't that bad for you, 
most brands and shampoos have just gone without it so most cleansers are sulfate free and I realized that I hadn't washed my hair with a sulfated shampoo in months but I was still using silicones in every single wash day because I, I do love my silicones for this high porosity hair. But yet I was never experiencing buildup. I never experienced any issues on my scalp or my hair. And I only realized this when I was trying out a shampoo that did have sulfates in it and I was like, huh. And I had to think like, when was the last time that I had used a sulfate on my hair? Not that I'm against using it. I have had much success with using shampoo with sulfates in the past. I just realized I wasn't using them and I didn't notice a difference at all. I still get really clean hair with sulfate-free shampoo and I can still get decently conditioned and soft hair with sulfated shampoos because just because there's sulfates in it doesn't mean there's not other ingredients in the shampoo to help combat any dryness and to help actually coat and seal the hair as it's cleaning. In either case, do you want to be using the same sulfate shampoo or the same sulfate-free shampoo all the time? Probably not. This is where I always recommend keeping a variety of shampoos on hand so you can, one, achieve balance, so you can treat your hair for what it needs on its wash day and achieve your hair's balance. So depending on your hair needs, I always recommend having a co-wash, a regular shampoo. This can be your sulfate-free or your sulfate shampoo, whatever makes you happy for more everyday use. And number three, a clarifying and chelating shampoo. This is gonna be your most cleansing shampoo that you do not need all the time, but on a regular basis when you do need a deep clean. My favorite clarifying shampoo I have used and shared a hundred times is Undo Goo PH9 from Malibu C, which is completely sulfate free, but incredibly cleansing. And that is exactly what I prepped Miss Samantha and Deborah with today. And so I hope that this video busted a few myths for you and, and maybe even helped you better understand the types of products that you have, what they're doing for your hair, and why they're in our products. I also would like to shout out and credit where I get my information from, some incredible resources that just keep me so educated. And really one day I want to become a cosmetic chemist. I, I'm so interested in this and one day I will, you know, when I, when I start formulating my own products, I really want to understand what goes into it. And I love learning about these things. And I hope you love learning about these things. And if you want to learn more and see where I get a lot of my information from as well, you need to follow the beauty brains, the lab muffin scientists, the eco well, um, Kelly Dobros is, is there. These are all fantastic scientists. You inspire me. We are not chemists. We don't understand what goes into product formulation. So sometimes we tend to get too caught up in ingredients that we don't really understand. But if you're using good products from good reputable brands, drugstore or not, and as long as you are cleansing and conditioning your hair all the time, then you should be good. Your hair and I will thank you later. And you know, I'm so glad that we got this out of the way. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something new. And if you want to see more videos like this, if you want to see more busted myths, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, leave a comment below of what else you'd like to see. This has been your main girl Mel, and I am out. Peace. Good evening. Why, hello. I am currently setting up to film in the morning. Before I go to bed, I have to prepare the girls for, um, for their big debut. Yeah, Deb and Samantha are all very, they're both very excited. Um, they look a hot mess right now, so I'm gonna shampoo them. And I want you to see what they look like. Let me just turn this light on. It's me every time. Just me and my girls. Girl, if you follow the wavy hair routine, I just know that you would know that your hair has texture. Like, oh my god, look how cute and clean. All right, so I'm just gonna let these girls air dry and tomorrow we put them to the test. Conclusion, Con this is conclusion. This is the conclusion. This is the conclusion. RIP to the real Mythbusters guy. I just heard one of them just recently passed away, which is unfortunate. That's kind of what inspired this video series. Them and Bill Nye, the science guy. Bill, 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 Bill. You have my heart in a pill. I love you, Bill. Is it a mouth conception? Or sorry, a misconception? I sethanate. I sethanate. I sethanate. I sethanate. I sethanate. I I can't say it normally now. I assassinate. Assassinate? 
Stop! Wait a minute. And if you see ingredients like as... Fuck. Is my makeup okay? At this point of the night, it's, it's too far gone. I'm gone. I'm done. I think I've spoken enough. I think the tea has been spilled. I think... Did I prove my point? Look, no shade. No tea. Hun tea. But then again, I rest my case. Scientific Mel has spoken. I'm not a scientist, but I want to be. I have four lights surrounding me. You wonder why I'm sweating. Slap coat doesn't help at all. Did, it, did anyone catch when my name tag fell off? I have no idea when it happened, how it happened. Who am I? Why am I like this? Why do I have so much energy? It's after 9 p.m. Why am I still filming? Is there something in my teeth? I always forget to check before I'm just out here like this. Hey, sister. Hey, come here. Hey, hey come here. What? Yeah, scientific Mel's up next. You see, I do it in segments. Ooh, maybe a snack first. These are my ladies. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry I did that to you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm just trying to prove a point. <laughs> just out for a dip, are you, Deb? Just out for a dip. Look at that highlight. Look at that highlight. <laughs> Can also be used as a body wash. Oh god, it makes it even worse. <laughs> we had to send Amanda on a trip. I had to get this. Yeah, we what we, do we had to buy even more product that we don't need to show you what you don't need. <laughs> god bless you. Miss Deborah. Deborah from Sephora. 